Wake up, everyone. It's time for a call to action. Welcome to Call to Action Today, where there are no sacred cows, with your host, Steve Noble, just an ordinary man who believes in an extraordinary God, and he's calling you out every week to live the Christian life in your home, your work, and even in politics. Call Steve now at 866-34-TRUTH, or check him out online at c2atoday.org. And now, with some much-needed cough medicine for the church, here's your host, Steve Noble. Well, I hope your affairs are in order. Better get your affairs in order. You only have a few days left. Uh, Because apparently, according to one uh, biblical scholar, a Christian numerologist, it's all going to be over this Saturday, September 23rd. Uh, Biblical prophecy claims the world will end on September 23rd. Christian numerologists claim. A Christian numerologist, this is from Fox News. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to Call to Action Radio. It is Steve Noble, and uh, great to be back with you today. And I've got, uh, if you're looking on Facebook, you know, say all these papers. Okay, I got all these different things. This uh, Rush Limbaugh would call this his stack of stuff, but all this stuff here. See, see all that? So I got all these different stories, and, and some of them are serious, and one of them is very sad and, and, and uh, concerning. And some of them are just nutty, like this one. And I just decided earlier today, you know, some people are like, well, how far out do you decide what you're going to do on the show? Well, if it's guests, and I have guests fairly often because, you know, I'm not the uh, the end of the rainbow. I don't have all the answers, and I love different stories, and I love to see what God's doing in other other parts of the world and other uh, ministries and just uh, goings on. And, and besides the, the news of the day and besides politics, there's a lot out there. And, uh, and if you've listened to this show for any period of time, you know that I'm not going to uh, talk about politics every day. I don't think that's good for any of us, and certainly there's enough out there for you to do that. Listen, I'm here in Raleigh, North Carolina. I can get up in the morning. I can listen to a local conservative guy who's got kind of a variety show in the morning, but on a really conservative station. And you can listen to him from 6 to 9, and then you can listen to Glenn Beck from 9 to noon, and then you can listen to Rush Limbaugh from noon to 3, and then you can listen to Sean Hannity from 3 to 6, and then a couple hours later you can listen to uh, Schnitt uh, from like 9 to midnight or whatever. I mean, you can drown in conservative talk radio and conservative media if you so choose. However... Uh, I don't choose. I mean, I tune in and out of those things uh, because it, it, uh, I'm always kind of doing show prep. I'm always listening. And, but but I, can't, I can't take it all the time. I used to just bathe in that stuff all the time. And, and I found myself selling my joy down the river. And I just don't think I should be doing that as a Christian. And I don't suggest you do either. So uh, we'll touch on a few political things today. And we'll be a little bit all over the map. But uh, today I just want to – I'm just like, I'm just going to kind of – to snoop around here and see what kind of stories are going on out there. And uh, and then always trying to take these things into uh, the biblical realm and apply our hopefully developing and hopefully already strong biblical worldview. And that's I, I love to have conversations about that and just look at the news of the day and movies, whatever. And so that's what we're going to do today. Let me start with this. Uh, so back to the, the Christian numerologist, okay, which uh, Eddie, my friend on Facebook Live, said that that's basically a an oxy or Ralph said it's an oxymoron <laughs> and Christian numerologist. So according to Christian numerologist, David Mead verses in Luke 21 and 26 are the sign that recent events such as the recent solar eclipse and hurricane Harvey are signs of the apocalypse. September 23rd is the date that was pinpointed using codes from the Bible, as well as a date marker in the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Meads has built his theory on so-called planet X, you know, the one right out there to the left, which is also known as Nibiru. Well, it, isn't, wasn't that in Star Wars? No, that was Naboo. Sorry. Which he believes will pass Earth on September 23rd, causing volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, and earthquakes, according to British newspaper The Sun. Well, I would just refer uh, <laughs> Mr. Mead, uh, unless he's God himself, I would just refer him to Mark chapter 13, verse 32. About that day or hour, when Jesus comes back, uh, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the sun, uh, S. Oh, uh, S O N son, uh, but only the father, only the father knows when the end will come. And I don't care whether you're a numerologist or a biologist or a botanist or just some dude named me who thinks he's figured it all out. Uh, unless you're God yourself, you're wrong. So, uh, don't worry, everybody. You don't have to get all your affairs in order by this Saturday, September 23rd. Uh, the Emmys. Did anybody watch the Emmys? Raise your hand if you watch the Emmys. Well, that would be two of you. <laughs> okay. So the Emmys last night, which, no, I didn't watch it. The Emmys looks like they're going to have the worst 
ratings ever. Of course, they spent a bunch of time attacking President Trump. These are all the uh, global warming folks, uh, the leftists out there on the on the left coast, all the global warming folks who, by the way, I just read this earlier. The red carpet for the Emmys itself had outdoor outdoor air conditioning. It looks like the 69th Annual Emmy Awards are heading into sub-basement territory in terms of ratings after host Stephen Colbert spent much of Sunday's evening attacking President Trump. So uh, here's another guy, Media Research Center. This is what he said, Dan Gaynor. The Emmys are a Hollywood bubble show. Actors and directors get to pretend they are important because they are doing such insightful takes on life in America when they have zero ideas what life is in America is actually like for the other 330 million people. Yet despite the cratering viewership, Gaynor doesn't think the Emmys will shy away from bashing Trump anytime soon. Of course not. Hollywood won't walk away from politics, he said. The left wants to force politics into every single aspect of our lives, from sports to movies to the food we eat. They won't be satisfied until we are all appropriately woke to their struggles du jour, Gaynor told Fox News. So that's another one going to the garbage can, by the way. So why doesn't anybody watch the Emmys? And now you've got technological changes here going on. Uh, For me as a Christian, I'm just like, now, now believe me. I, I, I am a born again Christian. I know the Bible fairly well. I've taught it. I've studied it. I'm almost done with my master's degree in Christian ethics. I'm fairly well schooled. I do not spend every hour of every day, uh, waking hours doing things that are building my faith. Sometimes I waste my time. I watch mindless entertainment. Uh, I listen to music, whatever. I take a nap. I'm not always building my faith, but when it comes to things like the Emmys, what's the point What's I mean, really, what's the point? Fewer and fewer people are even watching live television because now we just going to I'll watch it when I want to or I'll binge watch it when it shows up on Netflix or whatever. And so people just aren't that interested in it. So you've got the the transition to, to where regular live kind of quote unquote live television is dying on the vine quickly. Uh, but a lot of people just you see this with the NFL. The NFL's ratings are down historically down right now doing terribly. Could it be Colin Kaepernick? And uh, more and more NFL players that are taken to the knee during the, the, the Star Spangled Banner during the national anthem, yeah, I think that's definitely hurting them. And uh, and with the Emmys now, most people, and including the people that voted for Donald Trump, uh, are just like you know it's going to happen. So why tune in? Why do that? That's like going to the dentist and you don't need to get a filling, but you ask him to drill a hole in your tooth and fill it with whatever, uh, just because you know you don't have anything better to do. The Emmys are tanking because the Emmys are, you know, essentially worthless in the grand scheme of things. And God help those people. Most people on the left, most people at the Emmys, too smart to know any better. Not many noble, not many wise, right? <sighs> anyway, much better things to do with our time. You know, like cutting the grass at the White House. Do you hear that story about that 11-year-old boy? Somebody got mad about that, of course. We'll be right back. Let's try it all. Welcome back. It's Steve Noble. It's called Action Radio. Great to be with you. A couple things uh, getting ready to uh, hit the radar screen here at Called Action Radio. I should have the uh, uh, the tickets ready to go by tomorrow, our annual worship event called The Worship, which will be on Friday, October 27th, Friday, October 27th, here in Raleigh, the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. That's uh, where you hear my good friend, my slightly older brother from another mother, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., that's the church that he pastors, great uh, a great black church, a black culture church, right? So I've always wanted to do Call to Worship there. This is our fourth annual one. And so we're doing it there uh, this this year, next month, uh, Friday, October 27th. So we're going to have the praise and worship team from the upper room. So you're going to, this is like major league black church, which is awesome. I've been there many, many times, and I've been like a, a, a de facto member of that church for about 12 years. And I, and I love my brothers and sisters at upper room. Uh, and so, but it's just some off the hook praise and worship. So we're going to have praise and worship from their praise team. Then my buddy, the Matt, Matt Papa, Matt Papa band will be back. They've done the last three uh, call to worships for us. Incredible. One of the best praise and worship uh, 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 bands around. Just phenomenal. And plus he's an incredible singer, songwriter, preacher. It's just amazing. So we're going to have that. Uh, they're going to do separate sets during the night. And then the last two songs of the night, we're mashing them together. So you're going to have Matt Papa with the Black Church Praise and Worship Team and Black, and, and Matt's band, uh, and it's just going to be wild. And so that's that's that night. And then we're also going to have an incredible testimony uh, from porn star to pastor, uh, a newer friend of mine, Joshua Broom, who's uh, I had him on the show earlier this summer, and literally seven years in Hollywood, a 1,000 adult films, won awards and everything, 
in the last two years in the business of uh, uh, male male porn. And now the guy's an evangelist. I mean, leading people to the Lord, running his gym. He's got a CrossFit gym here in the Triangle area, baptizing some of the members of his gym. He's going through a discipleship program at a big local church, and he's just totally on fire for Jesus. An amazing testimony. So he'll share his testimony as well that night at Called to Worship. And then uh, we do an onstage interview each year. Last year was just me and uh, Bishop Wooden talking about Black Lives Matter and racism and stuff like that. I'm going to have Bishop Wooden back. But we're also adding in uh, the awesome, incredible uh, Lieutenant Governor of the great state of North Carolina, Dan Forrest. So he'll be there. That'll be the three of us on stage doing an interview that night. So tickets are going to be available starting tomorrow. Uh, I'll actually make them free, but a suggested donation of like five bucks a piece, which is great to help us pay for the event. And that's a big, uh, that's our once a year annual uh, event where we all come together. It is a fundraiser for, for the ministry. This radio show is a ministry. So definitely need your help there. But that information will become available. And then tomorrow I'm going to be giving away some tickets uh, coming up a week from Thursday, September 28th. Uh, Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen, m- many of you, if you're 50 or older, 40 or older, you know who Steve McQueen is. And at the time of his death, those few years leading up to his death, which was 1980, he was the number one uh, box office star on the planet. <clears throat> and, you know, there's all, been all these times over the years when you'll see a, a major sports star or movie star or something where they're kind of crashing and burning in terms of their career or some terrible thing happens. And then we're like, oh, man, what if somebody introduced them to the Lord? What if they got born again? What an incredible platform. Well, that, that happened with Steve McQueen. Now, he died of mesothelioma, which is a really nasty cancer. But he became a born-again Christian before he got the diagnosis. And then he always had, and in that short period of time, he, he wanted to uh, tell people what the Lord had done for him. But, but tragically, he died not that long after. And so this is an opportunity where God's going to give him the desires of his heart from 1980. And uh, Steve McQueen, American Icon, is the name of the movie. It's a documentary. Uh, my my uh, friend, uh, Pastor Greg Laurie, did that with John Irwin. The Irwin brothers did Woodlawn and Mom's Night Out and October Baby. Uh, so that's a one night only fathom event on the 28th. So we're doing a men's outreach version of that here in Raleigh, North Carolina on Thursday, September 28th, me and a buddy, uh, Russ Andrews, who has a great uh, men's ministry in town, finding purpose. And, uh, and we're going to, this is a men's outreach event and I've, uh, held back some tickets. So tomorrow here on called action radio, I'm going to give away 20 tickets to come join us on Thursday, September 28th. So just a week from this Thursday. An incredible outreach. Pastor Greg Laurie at the end of the movie, right there on the screen, uh, gives a gospel presentation, a short one, and an invitation to respond. We're going to follow that up right there in the theater. So if uh, you want to bring somebody that uh, doesn't know the Lord, and again, this is a men's outreach event. Sorry, ladies. Uh, My wife will be in another theater at the same location, a different screen, seeing the movie at the same time. 7 p.m., September 28th. But I'll give away 20 tickets tomorrow and, uh, and want you to take advantage of that for the gospel. So, guys... Uh, ladies, maybe for your husband or your son or whatever, uh, somebody that doesn't know the Lord, make sure you bring with you somebody that's not walking with God. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. You may have heard this story, uh, of the little kid, he's about 11. And so he, he was emailing the white house and, uh, said, Hey, I want to, I'd love to come. It'd be an honor to come cut the grass in the, in the rose garden. Okay. So he comes, he shows up, right? This is great. Donald Trump sees this and, and, uh, president Trump, uh, gives the green light and you know, all the other stuff. So, so they, so the kid comes out and he saw all the pictures on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. Well, one guy didn't think that was so great. His name is Steve Greenhouse. He worked for the Times, New York Times, for 31 years. Still writes for the paper on occasion. He took issue with the feel-good story of the boy, Frank Giaccio uh, of Falls Church, Virginia, who showed up at the White House Friday to cut the grass at the invitation of the president. Not Here's, the, here's what the guy tweeted. This is, this is classic. Uh, not sending a great signal on child labor. Minimum wage and occupational safety. Trump White House lets 10-year-old volunteer mow its lawn. Greenhouse, who covered unions for much of his time at the newspaper, tweeted. What a shock. I mean, come on. Trump spokeswoman Sarah Sanders said at the White House press briefing Friday that it was an honor to host Frank. The president has always loved go-getters like Frank, she said. After his initial tweet, Greenhouse, the reporter, engaged in a spirited back and forth with other Twitter users who disagreed with his view and let him have it. He tweeted later, what this kid wants to do is noble, but sorry, I'm mindful of problems. I've written lots about child labor and being hurt by machinery. Now, really? I, I, as soon as that happened, I'm like, somebody's going to say something about child labor. Somebody's going to say something about uh, the danger of that. Somebody's going to say something about uh, machinery or, or whatever, 
or or uh, minimum wage, and sure enough, there you go. Now, and now, that's just. Man. I mean, it's just. <laughs> I don't. That doesn't surprise me at all, because we're such we're such a nitpicky society. Isn't it amazing what we get bent out of shape over? You know, people around the world are suffering tremendously, even here in our own country, down in Florida and down in Texas and Houston. People suffering tremendously. There's another hurricane, uh, Hurricane Maria, expected to become a major storm, maybe hit the, the same islands in the Caribbean as as uh, as the other hurricane just did, as Irma just did. It's going to hit as a, probably a Cat 3 storm. And, and people take the time to complain about some kid who wants to go serve his country and do something nice and cut the grass at the White House. I mean, that's that's so American. That's an awesome thing. Young guy out there cutting grass, making money. I did that for a little while when I was a kid. Painted houses, of course, for years. That's awesome. And then people were so petty in this country. People are so petty. And we can do it, too. Can't I can do it. I can be so petty. I'm like, man, I'm an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I've got the keys to the kingdom that God has shown me and entrusted to me, which is the gospel, and, and the things we whine about and get bent out of shape about and complain about are really just pathetic. I mean, think about these things. Beautiful, noble things, wonderful things, gospel-centered things. But no, like, like for example, and I'll, I'll tell you this one when we come back. Uh, a lady goes to Hobby Lobby, which is, of course, is a hateful location anyway because there are a bunch of Christians that hate everybody except Jesus. Uh, she goes there, and they have a, a little glass vase. And in that vase, oh, oh my, I... I have to pray about it over the break and decide whether I'm going to tell you what they put in the vase. That was so deeply offensive. This is Steve Noble. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's Steve Noble, Call to Action Radio. Great to be with you, little David Bowie there. I was a big David Bowie fan. Well, still am. Uh, but uh, that was one of my uh, concerts that I've been. I've been to about 35 concerts. I was a concert concert maniac from about uh, 17 to probably about 25. So like my college years and stuff. And uh, I was just a concert maniac. So oftentimes uh, you'll hear uh, people that I've been listening to for years uh, on on the radio show, and yes, some of them will be secular, but that's a, another discussion for another day. Another day today on Call to Action Radio, uh, I'm just all over the map. I'm kind of bouncing all over the room, so I just found a bunch of different stories, most of which were things that just absolutely enraged me, and I just wanted to share some of that misery with you because I love you so much, and uh, and misery loves company, right? <laughs> but also a little levity. Things are so 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 difficult. You know, Trump's in with the UN, so we're paying attention to that. He's in some. Uh, Closed door meetings today, a, a general session speech tomorrow, which I know hopefully is going to hammer away on uh, North Korea. That is a major problem, uh, which we need to pay attention to. And North Korea, they are psycho, and uh, and that is a serious threat. I, I fear that uh, that that we will definitely take military action with North Korea, which is going to be crazy because they have like five or six thousand uh, pieces of artillery uh, sitting down on the border with South Korea and the. And the thirtieth thirtieth parallel there, and the DMZ, and uh, and they start we start hitting them from the air to take out their nuclear capability. They start launching that stuff at Seoul, Korea. You're going to have unbelievable, unbelievable casualty numbers. I'm t- like a hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. I mean, crazy numbers. And that's that's real. That's going on. So we need to be praying for those in authority over us, according to God's word. Uh, pray one Tim org, one of my favorite websites, dear friend of mine, Jim Young set this up capital commission. They do Bible studies and out and evangelical outreach and prayer with, uh, members at, at the state level, state houses around the country. I think they're up over 30, about 30 states now where they have, uh, literally men of God going in there and praying with our leaders and praying for them and with them and doing Bible studies and sharing the gospel. It's awesome. And we need to be praying, pray one Tim org. Pray one Tim two first Timothy chapter two. Pray one Tim two dot org. That's your call to action today. Go to pray one Tim two dot org. Find your state. There'll be a map there on the homepage. Click your state and sign up. And every day I get an email really early in the morning, and uh, and and it gives me uh, six seven people to pray for leaders from my state here in North Carolina where I live. So I've got uh, somebody at the federal level in Congress. Occasionally the U.S. Supreme Court will show up and the U.S. 
uh, federal executive branch, like the president, the vice president, uh, occasionally that will show up. But always, every day, I have uh, two members of my state Senate and three members of my state House. And doesn't tell me their party affiliation, shows me their picture, shows me their name, shows me where they're from. And, uh, and I just pray for them, just briefly, just pray for them. Pray for their, if I know they're Christians, I just pray that way. If I don't, uh, I pray for their salvation. And there's always a theme like uh, wisdom or discernment or moral integrity, stuff like that. So that's an awesome thing to do. And with everything going on, not only in our country, but in the world, uh, we need to be prayerful people. Uh, pray without ceasing, which means this attitude of prayer, the opportunity comes up. You think of somebody, you see something, you hear something, uh, pray. Just We should be just throwing prayers at the Lord all the time. Uh, like uh, Hurricane Maria expected to become a major storm near the Caribbean, still cleaning up from Irma. Uh, that news is out there and, you know, really, really difficult, challenging things that we need to pay attention to. Back to this stupid story. Uh, so this lady goes to a Hobby Lobby and, and she sees uh, a glass vase. And in these three glass vases, there is cotton, like the actual like stalks of cotton. You know what that looks like. Here's what she puts out on a tweet. This state court is wrong, all caps, on so many levels, all caps. There's nothing decorative about raw cotton, a commodity which was gained at the expense of African-American slaves. A little sensitivity goes a long way. Please remove this, quote unquote, decor. That was last Thursday. So since then, it's taken off on Facebook. Uh, the, her post, she put it up on the she did a did a comment on the Hobby Lobby Facebook page, liked 33,000 times, 76,000 comments, and has been shared nearly 7,000 times. Really? Now, I was listening to Glenn Beck earlier today, and they, they, they put this story up on The Blaze, and they were like, well, does this story matter ultimately? No, not at all. It doesn't matter. But why, why share it? Why put it up there? Because, and I, and I appreciated this point, because it shows you uh, how much we should be thankful for living in America that, that things are so good generally, in America, that somebody complaining and whining about a display, which means nothing, because odds are uh, Danielle was wearing cotton whilst she complained about the cotton display at Hobby Lobby. And so I guess we should all stop wearing cotton because, uh, you know, 150 years ago, it was being picked by slaves in America. It's just totally preposterous. But I did appreciate the point for Glenn Beck's staff that, hey, listen, if this is what, what is going to get people's attention and what kind of stuff we're going to complain about in America, things must be pretty good in America. And you know what? That's exactly right. That's exactly Really, that's what gets our attention in America or the Emmys or a little kid cutting the grass because pretty much everybody in America, if they want, can eat. We have liberty. We have freedom. Thank you, Eddie, on Facebook Live. We have uh, y- You can get medical attention and medical help if you want it. You can get it. Life in America is unbelievably blessed still. Now it's frustrating and maddening and the political things. And, oh, my goodness, it drives you crazy. But let's be thankful. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's do it right now. Dear Lord, Father, I just want to pray with all my friends here on the show and on Facebook and stuff. Lord, you know who they are. You know, you know the numbers of hairs on their heads. We just thank you, Lord, that we live in this unbelievably blessed culture where we have spit in your face in so many different ways for so many years. But with your graciousness and your love and your mercy, we still live in arguably the best country on the planet, Lord, and and help us to acknowledge that. This is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and are glad in it. And especially uh, because we're here in a country that's still really, for the most part, in many ways thriving. And uh, we're at peace for the most part, Lord. And, And I can get on the air and talk about you, and I can talk about you in a mall or on a street corner. Uh, and uh, proclaim your good news and, and not be under threat of, you know, death. So we just thank you, Lord, for the blessings of living in America. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. This was really sad. I don't know if you've followed what's been going on the last year for uh, Nabil Qureshi. Actually, uh, my wife and I, my wife knows her better, knows his mother-in-law uh, here in Raleigh. Yeah, an incredible apologist. been working with Ravi Zacharias. Uh, but a year ago, this terrible advanced stomach cancer, last August, uh, he just died on Saturday at the age of 34. An incredible apologist, a, a convert from Islam, and, uh, and, he, and he put up all these videos. You should go watch these videos. If you want to get a little perspective in your life, go watch some of these videos. Just as recently as just last week of Nabil uh, sharing what he's going through. And talking about you know where he was at with his faith and and uh, and, and asking people to pray for him I, 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 during the Houston flooding, 
I mean, he was stuck in his house and he needed more food for the feeding tube and everything. And he shared all this stuff, all these videos. So just you can go to YouTube, just Google Nabil, N-A-B-E-E-L, Qureshi, Q-U-R-E-S-H-I. If, even if you misspell it, Google will take care of you. And go look at some of these videos. It's, there's so much spiritual fruit there for all of us that we need to be absorbing that, thinking about these things. Think about such things the scriptures tell us to do. Whatever's noble, whatever's beautiful, whatever's worthy. And certainly Nabil's life, Nabil's conversion, Nabil's ministry, and Nabil's sharing with all of us, with the world, is worthy of your time. Uh, it's really heartfelt. It's touching. It's pr- it's provocative in the spirit uh, and, and really challenging to a perspective to, to make sure that we're giving God thanks for everything that we have every day. And pray for his family. He had a wife and, he, and a young child and pray for uh, his extended family. And uh, Ravi Zacharias has written some incredible things about Nabil just in the last couple of days. Again, Nabil Qureshi died at a tender young age of 34. He's healed now. He's home with the father. And uh, and, and we look forward to seeing him uh, one day in heaven. But that was sad to hear about that. Let me finish with this. And then in the last segment of the show, uh, my friend David Fisher from Landmark Capital will come in. Something crazy going on with China. He sent this over to me earlier today. I'm like, what? I mean, this is wild. So this is something you need to hear about. We'll talk about that with David. But here's a, a friend, uh, Sarah Harden, who's on my board, sent me this story. Uh, and I've known about this guy. Uh, this was in the Daily Signal where he's talking. His name is Blaine Adamson. Uh, I'm a T-shirt maker with gay customers and gay employees. I still was sued. So he chose not to print some T-shirts for a local gay pride parade. And the local Human, Rela- Human Rights Commission, which was under the city's uh, control, goes after him for discrimination. So now it's now it's and, and, and he's had gay employees. He has gay uh, customers. But in this case, you you have freedom of speech. You don't have to. You can't be forced to say something that make you violate your conscience. So all the time, to- all kinds of stuff like this. People refuse to make the T-shirts. He actually had two lesbians that own a T-shirt shop uh, 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 write a big article in his support because they don't want to print everything that comes into them. And that's freedom of speech or to not speak and freedom of conscience and religious protection. So he won the most recent case. This thing's been going on for five years. So he won the most recent case, which is great, but it's going to get appealed too. It's going to get appealed. And this is the battle. And you better be ready for it. And you better be ready to pay a price for standing for the gospel of Jesus Christ, not violating your faith with the Lord. And as the country and your city says, you must say it, you you just have to obey God instead of man. We'll be right back. Steve Noble, Call to Action Radio. Great to be with you. And in case you hadn't noticed, it is a Monday. And uh, every Monday, God willing, when uh, when the schedule works out right, and this week has definitely worked out right, we have our, our good friend uh, David Fisher from Landmark Capital who's here to help educate us and inform us. And we talk about uh, big financial issues in the banking world, the stock market world. Uh, because, uh, you know, and I, and I try to remember to remind everybody about this, David, that Jesus talked a lot about money. Uh, you know, 16 of the parables were all about how to handle money and possessions and the Gospels. Uh, one out of 10 verses deal directly with the subject of money. The Bible offers 500 verses on prayer, less than 500 verses specifically on faith, but more than 2,000 verses on money and possessions. And and I think uh, that's an issue that we all struggle with and we all need wisdom with. And uh, and so that's why it's always a great blessing to have our friend David Fisher on. With a Money Monday update, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Great to have you in here. So I, uh, I I always look forward to the Money Monday updates because we always start with a passage of Scripture today, Second uh, Timothy. Uh, take us there, and, and uh, what, what can we kind of glean from that? Second Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 13, While evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You know, it's uh, what comes out of our heart is, is really where life is and what, how the Lord uh, impresses us on, on how to live and Him being our model and uh, us reflecting um, His life in our life. And, you know, obviously there's some people in lives that have been deceived, you know, both spiritually but also military-wise and through, you know, trying to be 
leading countries and people astray. And, you know, with what's going on with North Korea, you know, it's really an issue of the heart. Somebody who wants to control the world, and, yeah. and that's his motive, um, Kim Jong-un. And, I, you know, I don't really talk about political war and, and physical war and spiritual war. But it, today, you know, it's clearly with what happened at the UN, it's there's a lot of deception, and it's showing its its fruit, unfortunately, with the rhetoric between our, the two uh, presidents, uh, President Trump and, and the leader of uh, North Korea. Yeah, and, I, and I've uh, talked about that briefly earlier today as, as one of the just one of many reasons why uh, we need to be praying for those in authority over us and, and specifically for us as Americans with the president of the United States and everybody in Congress, really, whether you like them or not, whether they're on your Repu- your Republican or Democrat side or not. We're called to pray for those in authority over us. So thanks for always uh, starting us off back in the scriptures here, David. I appreciate that. And speaking of President Trump, he's at the United Nations. So tell us what he's doing there, what his key points are that he's covering today. I think he's talking to the general session tomorrow. And and why does it matter? Why should we be paying attention to this? Well, it's a four-day session, Steve, and, and he did speak today in his opening remarks at the UN. And he said this, that it's the U- United Nations has not reached its full potential because of bureaucracy and, and mismanagement, while the United Nations uh, on a regular uh, budget has increased by 140 percent, and its staff uh, by year 2000 has more than doubled, we're not seeing the results in line with this investment. You know, and what he's referring to, Steve, is we're, we, uh, we supply 22 percent, our country does, of the budget to the United Nations. There's, we're, there's a lot of countries involved in the oh, UN. Yeah. Um, you know, he went on and on. He says not uh, any one member uh, nor one individual must share a disappropriate uh, burden, and that's he's talking about military wise. He's also talking about financially, and he should. Uh, he's saying we're clearly defining what the metric should be, and we've been successful. So he's laying the groundwork, saying the UN has not been successful. So what does this mean to us? This means, uh, you know, and the flip side of this is North Korea while he was speaking, was threatening to speed up their nuclear program over the U.N. sanctions. So what he means by this and how it's affecting us is that we might not lo- no longer want to support the U.N. financially like we have been. If the U.N. can't get a broad-based global effort to to get Korea to disarm yeah. their nuclear warheads. Yeah, and we just did some joint exercises uh, just in the last couple of days, and and we're actually doing some uh, bombing missions, live fire bombing missions, uh, really close to the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. There, I mean, this is serious business, and uh, and and I'm I'm I think it's more likely that we're going to see some kind of military action at some point than not, and uh, and we need to be aware of these things. And of course, all that anything that's going to happen there is going to affect the markets, but but also another player in all of this is China. Uh, and you were you sent me a note about this earlier today, which was kind of shocking to see what China was doing. Uh, some maneuvers behind the scenes with their currency and, and, and how that could affect the U.S. dollar. Tell us about that, David. China made a big announcement uh, that shocked me, probably the biggest announcement in 10 years that I've seen coming out of China, you know, on the backdrop of them uh, since 2005 buying gold and also selling U.S. dollars. They announced that for now – that they're going to make payments for the oil that comes into their country, and they're the largest importer of oil in the world. But they're going to make payments not only to that the supplier to them, not only in their own currency, the yuan, but now they have an alternate way of making payment, and that is gold. So this is a huge changer for the industry in gold, the industry of oil, and really the dollar, unfortunately. So, so, so China is actually. So now they're just adding gold as 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 the the currency. That, so they'll actually import oil and pay for it with gold, gold like gold itself. Exactly. This is they sh- set up not only the Shanghai Gold Exchange, but they set up set up the Shanghai International Energy Exchange to facilitate all this. And this last summer, just a few months ago, they put their systems test to. Um, operations uh, into play, and they made substantial preparations in the month of June and July. So this is actually you know, playing it out. It's not just rhetoric. It is actually is happening. And to put it into perspective, China imports 
last year, 7.6 million barrels a day. 7.6 million barrels a day went into China. And multiply that by 365 days a year and multiply that number by 40, where I get the 40 is $40 a barrel is the average price per barrel last year. This is a huge number, and a portion of that's going to be paid out in gold. Now, what does that do? I mean, the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency, and a lot of people switch over to the dollar to do this type of uh, uh, transactions with oil. I mean, what happens to the U.S. dollar because of this? Well, it's going to be challenged. This, you know, in 1971, we took gold off our currency, and we had to create another reason for the world to use our dollar, and that's where we signed the petrodollar. We signed contracts with OPEC saying, we'll protect you, the Saudis there, military-wise, if you only sell oil in denominated dollars. And so from 1974 until 2014, that happened, Steve. And in 2014, China broke the back of the petrodollar by being the first country that says, we're only going to pay make payments, not in dollars anymore. We're going to make payments in our own currency called the yuan, and Russia joined suit right behind them along with Iran. And then within months, last in 2014, 17 countries started buying and selling oil, not just in U.S. dollars. So this is the threat to the dollar, and this is how we could lose the world reserve when another currency can be used and another, the ultimate currency called gold, is being used to make payment in oil. Well, I mean, you look at the U.S. I just looked this up. In 2016, the United States imported approximately 10.1 million barrels per day. Uh, and we're heavily industrialized the entire country. And now China, right on our heels, at 7 million barrels a day. And, and, and they're, they're largely, I mean, a big chunks of China. There's not much going on there at all. It's amazing the type of swing this is going to have, the, uh, the economic impact. So, so what would normally happen? I guess what, normally in this case, David, wouldn't we expect to see gold? Uh, react price-wise since they're going to start using so much of it? Well, some people have said in this report that I've been reading, said this has already been in place, and they say this is could be the major reason or a big reason why we saw such a run-up in gold in the month of June, July, and August. So it might have already been factored in, and with the news today coming out, you know, with President Trump speaking so eloquently and, and kind of in the face of Korea indirectly. Um, And there's been no um, missiles firing yet, so there's been this pullback in gold. So I don't think you're going to see this huge, you know, all of a sudden jump in gold and this huge, you know, um, big days, multiple days of jumping in gold going up. You know, I don't like those kind of markets anyway. I like, you know, 1% here, a half a percent there, a pullback. So I don't think, I think it's already factored in. But again, I mean, the market's up about 66 points today. And again, whenever we talk about precious metals and specifically gold, it's kind of like I always think in terms of a teeter-totter that uh, that we need to be diversifying, and especially with the nature of what's going on in the markets and even just life in America and life around the world. I mean, it's a topsy-turvy situation all the time, and, and news like this affects it across the board. And that, that's why I think it's so important that we talk about this and balancing out our own portfolios. Am I thinking correctly here, David? Absolutely, because when you compare gold to the like the Dow, gold is up thirteen point five percent. The Dow is up twelve point eight percent year to date. So, it's they're competing neck and neck. It's kind of like a horse race. Yeah. I think you should ride both ponies. Yeah, what a great point. So, uh, tell people how they can get more uh, information and education. They can call our company at eight four four eight seven nine eighty eight eighty two. Or then go to our website at landmarkgold.com. All right, buddy, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you on right quick because we're gonna pray with our Facebook Live friends after the show. We'll we'll uh, take some time to pray together. And by the way, friends, listening on the radio where, wherever you're at, and some of you listen uh, later at night. Depends on what market you live in. But you can always join us live on Facebook during the day, four to five p.m. Eastern time. Facebook.com backslash C2A Radio, as in call to action. Facebook.com backslash C2A Radio, and we pray together. Uh, at the end of every show like we're going to do with David Fisher. This is Steve Noble, Call to Action Radio. David Fisher and his team there for great information and help. Landmarkgold.com is their website. And God willing, I'll talk to you again real soon.